Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And tonight, George and I welcome one of our dear friends from, we haven't seen her in a long time, <laughs> <laughs> but she still looks great and she sounds just as great and Good she's answer. really great. Thank you. And, uh, and great at promoting yourself. Kelly Buttrick, how you doing tonight? I am so excited to be back. I am so excited to see you guys. I'm excited to read Jody's name down there. This is uh, this is a lot of fun, even for you know late night. This is this is really cool and wild for what you know late on Eastern time. Yeah, That's, yeah, it's only five o'clock here. Anyway, <laughs> if you've got a question for Kelly about marketing, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is in there writing down every last word you guys are typing Hi, in Jeff. the comment section, and we will get to those questions in a little bit. But in the meantime, are you ready, George? By the way, George is actually here in the studio <laughs> with me now. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. Yes, you are. He's right over there. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. All righty. Yes, I'm wearing my official voiceover body shop. Look at this. My logo polo shirt. You can have one. Nobody's, we haven't really been selling these lately. Is it work? Does, does, does this, do we still have a store? I don't know. Check it on the, on the, uh, on, on the, uh, the, the home site. Because I'm yeah, checking the, right now. there was, there was a cafe press thing on there. And if it's not, we will fix it. And then you can get your own voiceover body shop polo shirt. Or yes, my, my, there was also a thong and a shower curtain, there was. you know, the clock, which I actually have on the wall over here and uh, <laughs> things along those we'll lines. We'll fix that because right now it's not there. We're going to have to fix that pronto. Yes. Anyway, but it, see, I'm, I'm not wearing a Hawaiian shirt for the first time, I think, in 11 years. I'll think I'll wear it for Tech Talk, though. Anyway, uh, tonight we have a great guest, uh, a young lady who has been... I don't think she's actually been with us since we were doing East West Audio Body Shop. To it's tell been you a while. Truth. Yeah. You know, maybe not since, you know, I've been out here in California, but uh, let me introduce our guest. Kelly Buttrick is an award winning voiceover talent with a reputation for professionalism, easy directability, and exceeding expectations. Talk about hyperbole. Her voice is heard on national advertisements, documentaries, and corporate productions. And we always have a great time talking with her about her methods, techniques, and how she stands out from the crowd. Let's welcome back Kelly Buttrick. Hey, guys. Hey there. Massive applause as she enters the studio. <sighs> yeah, how you right, doing? right. That's all right. I'm doing good. I'm so excited. I know I just said that earlier in the pre-thing, but I am excited. I'm so excited to be here with you guys and, and see all these familiar names. I just saw Don pop up there, and it's just, it's like old home week. It is. I love we, it. We, we, we need like to all get together. That's right. You know, I, know, I mean, I, I do miss, I miss seeing everybody, just being able to hug everybody. And I mean, this has been a crazy time for all of us and I miss it. Yeah. Without the conventions, there is some severe hug debt going on. There is. Uh, and I'm a hugger, man. I am such a hugger. Which is why I love running into you at conventions. <laughs> so it's, it's how it all works. Um, but anyway, we have not seen each other or talked to each other much yeah. because we've been <laughs> in this plague going on around yeah. uh, the world. Uh, we haven't seen you in such a long time. How did you fare during the pandemic? How did it affect your business? Um, it was interesting because uh, it didn't necessarily affect my day to day because as most of us, we'd all been working from home anyway. But I did have a panic for about the first week because everything stopped. 
I don't know about you guys, it was just everything just stopped and I freaked out and I sat my husband down and said, Bri, you know, this may be the end. Um, you know, we may have to pull kids out of school, you know, the whole bit. Um, but what it was, was my clients were adjusting to working at home and they were setting up their work at home spaces and trying to get used to working from home. So that's what it was. And then all of a sudden, everything started really kicking up really fast because everybody was changing their messaging. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw it, but somebody in the advertising industry did a timeline. It was a, an ad timeline of the, basically the tone, how it changed during the <laughs> oh, pandemic. Right. Yeah, like we're, we're getting going get through this together. <laughs> yep. And it's just for a short time. And then, you know, we're all going to be back. And then, you know, kind of a, this is the way it is. And especially in healthcare, a lot of that messaging changed. So it, it became busy, but I'm telling you what, that first week I thought I was done. I, I really thought I was done. I, Cause I couldn't explain why it would just stop. Yeah. See, I was of the opinion that, you know, as voice actors, if it started to wipe out the world, which it basically tried to do, uh, we were all stuffed in our, our booths here. Yeah. And so if it wipes out humanity, who's going to run the world? Voice actors. That's smart. That's <laughs> smart. Know. Can I be on your cabinet? <laughs> Absolutely. Good. You're, oh, you're good. first on the list. <laughs> okay, good. I, I, I need positivity and exuberance. On my, good. On my I'll be, I'll be, pos I'll be the minister of uh, positivity and exuberance. All right. Sounds like a Marx Brothers movie early. now. Exactly. So, but, but business didn't fall off. If anything, I heard a lot of people just really did better during the, during the pandemic because there was so much messaging going on. I stayed, honestly, I stayed about the same. Yeah. Um, but, and we'll get into this when we start talking about marketing, but I think a lot of that was because of the existing relationships I had with my clients. So it Which really, is, yeah. I felt like the pandemic wasn't necessarily the time to go out and reach out to clients but rather it was the time to continue to foster those relationships, be there for them on their last minute changes. Again, as all these tones are changing so quickly, um, it, was, it, was a, it was that that kept my business going. It wasn't, it wasn't me running out and getting new clients. That did not, for at least the first year of the pandemic, I did not, I stopped all direct um, reaching out to people. Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, businesses were, Everything was changing. Like, mm -hmm. like we said, the messaging was changing, um, what, what needed to be voiced. But then again, so much stuff had to go online and a lot of voices were needed for that. So I think yep. it also dragged an awful lot of people into the business, which was <laughs> like, yes, it did. You know, it's like, well, I, 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 can, I don't have my IT job anymore or I'm working yep. remotely. Maybe I could do voiceover. Like, weren't they in for a big surprise? Um, now I know you as someone who makes no bounds about what you do. Right. <laughs> you you probably have a great elevator pitch, which is always fun to do when I you're don't. actually I hate in an elevator. elevator. Pitches. Oh, okay, good. I've actually gotten to do one in an elevator. Which did was you really? Actually, I did. It was actually it was at a WovoCon, and so you know we're all wearing our badges, and he's like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "I'm in an elevator. <laughs> I get to do my elevator pitch." All right. Oh, that's awesome! High five. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. All right. Um. You do what it takes to get your voice in front of people. And I have a feeling, you know, and you've probably gotten even better since the last time we talked about it. How, what is your process about thinking about how you, you market yourself? How do you get your, your voice in front of people? Well, I would say um, it has changed and I've learned lessons over the years. Uh, and recently, I think I was telling you earlier that um, I have gone back to what I started doing. And that is reaching out directly, individually to people. Um, and I made the brilliant hire of a virtual assistant. She actually was Adam Varner's assistant. And uh, when she became available, I begged her to come. And we've been working together for a couple of years. Um, and she helps me do these direct reach outs. So I'll, we'll research together. We will prospect and research and find someone that we want to reach out to. And then we decide how we're going to do that, whether I'm going to do that or she's going to do that. And anytime she does it, it then comes back to me. So she'll say something like, uh, can I have Kelly send you her demos? And then I am 
starting the relationship after that, after the awkward cold contact, um, then I get to start the relationship with a warm contact. You know, thank you so much for, you know, letting me send my demos and I loved your work on such and such. And so just going back to a very personalized rather than a, you know, spaghetti, let's just throw it all out there, do everything we can. Um, and that, that works. I have done that before. But I am finding a lot more success going back to the way I started. So it's a lot, a lot of hands-on type of stuff then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the only difference is that now I've brought in Diane, which just it, it I should say, it makes the process a little bit more sophisticated. How so? What, what makes it well, like Diane uh, created uh, a CRM, customer relationship oh, management. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she got me into that where we can take notes on things. It's more sophisticated in that my husband taught me, I do what I do well so I can pay other people to do what they do well. And I really stink at cold calls. I sound just as awkward and weird as I feel. Um, but Diane is great at it and she loves doing it. So she will do cold calls and then I will do cold emails. She will also do cold emails. So just more sophisticated in that way that we're each doing what each of us are good at doing. But the basic premise is still the same, starting those one-on-one -on -one personal relationships and fostering those, continuing to grow those. It is a marathon. It is not Absolutely. a sprint. I am still... All these years later, I am still reaping the benefits of those seeds planted years ago. Yeah. I, I think the basis of any business, as my father taught me, is I don't have customers. I only have friends. I and love he, that. He, yeah. He was really good at creating these relationships. And, mm -hmm. you know, but so if there was ever a problem, it was like, hey, what's going on? Hey, you know, yep. that sort of thing. And And that's, you know, and you create these relationships so... You know their children's names, and you yep. know where they're going on vacation, and those sorts of things. And 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 those are important things to, to be able to discuss when you open up a conversation. And it's like, you know, and why are you sending me this really crappy script? Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I I've ever said that. It. <laughs> uh, well, I I may have, but you know, they, they, at least they know that you know you can be sarcastic a little yes. bit. Yes, but it's it's about creating that type of relationship and. You know, and, and who wouldn't want to have a relationship with someone like you? Well, and I look at it as who wouldn't want to have a relationship with someone like our clients. So I, I don't know about you guys, but when I started, I was talking to people, friends of mine that had their own businesses and were really good at what they did. And every single one of them, <clears throat> my husband included, all talked about forms and, you know, keeping everything professional. And that's just not me. I am so much more, I just, how could you not want to be friends with these incredibly creative, funny, fun people? And so I threw their advice out the window and, <laughs> and, and I love, I mean, I am such a hugger. I loved doing live sessions in Atlanta and I would bring in baked goods and we'd chat and catch up. And, um, I can tell you guys, so I have done uh, the Yamaha boats off and on for years. And uh, recently we did the, the 20, I guess, 2023 or 2022, whatever they are. We did the newest ones. And uh, you guys may know Jason Shablik. He was engineering that. And we got on and I've gotten to know them really well. Uh, I would say that, you know, we've become friends, these folks. And when we started, I said, hey, you guys, I moved out to a lake. Maybe we need to start talking trade. And immediately I get a text that said something like, Kelly, only you would have the companies to do something <laughs> like that. But what turned out is the gal I work with, her boss, who I also know, and I know his fiance, um, said, as a matter of fact, he bought a place on that same lake. So immediately after the session, I reached out with an email and I said, okay, here's our address where are you guys? We just moved here. And they are literally across a cove from us. And so they've taken us out on boat rides. Um, my husband is totally sold on a Yamaha boat. We just, you know, they just have to make some. Um, and we've had them over for Georgia games. I mean, it's just, it's just great. You got to be friends with the people you work with. Absolutely. Yeah. 
kind of tough when, you know, you, you're, you're in one place and they're, you know, a thousand miles away, but, you know, but if you can it's at least. It's still possible. Absolutely. You know, and when, I you, think when you drop into the, town. One of the things that, you know, we were talking about the pandemic and George and I actually talked about this the other day, but one of the great things I think about the pandemic is that now we're on camera. So it really gives us so many people use Zoom. That's what they're used to. Um, now that the pandemic has come and a lot of people aren't going back, they continue to use Zoom. So by using Zoom, I get to see them, they get to see me, and I think that fosters more of a connection. It feels more like those live sessions. Obviously, I can't bring baked goods and I can't really hug them. Um, but it's a close second. Mm. You can give them a verbal hug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just give them a so little So it wink. doesn't bother you to have to appear, appear on camera. No. Like now that's something you just you've embraced it. It's part of Yeah, I don't normally wear makeup. Um I put on makeup for you guys. Um and because it's late and I don't want to look as tired as I probably am. Um <laughs> but I I usually don't wear makeup. I have taken down what I wear. Uh I would always when I would go into Atlanta, I would always try to dress uh professional or professionally casual, business casual. Now it's pretty much a fun T-shirt that usually is a conversation starter, um, mm -hmm. and and yeah, I mean I've I've had sessions where they want to record my face because they're going to do some kind of animation to it or something like right. that. So yeah, I just I I like it. I embrace it. It's the closest thing to doing a live session, and I miss those. I'll bet. If you're just joining us, you've missed a whole lot already, but there's still more to come. Uh, we're talking with Kelly Botrick, who is a voice actor and a master of promoting herself to the people that hire us, which is something we all need to know and understand. <laughs> uh, if you have a question for her about marketing uh, for your business, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holdman is in there taking all that stuff down. He will relay those questions to us, and we will ask Kelly these questions. And that's how the show works. Uh, anyway, uh, Kelly, again, it's great to see you. And uh, you guys the, the last time you were with us was sort of at the tail end of your campaign to get Jeep to get you as yeah. your voice. Yeah. How did that go? As I recall, you didn't quite have the success you wanted, but you sure made the effort. Yeah. So that was. So I guess the best way to describe it is it was a gut-wrenching success. So personally, <laughs> okay. <laughs> personally, um, it, was, it was very hard to let that go um, when I finally, you know, was convinced that it, nothing was going to happen from it. So I, I kind of went, I mean, I just went into a dark place. I was so sad um, because I had put so much of my heart into it. Um, but it was the best I had ever done year wise, my, my income increased by almost 40% because that effort had garnered so much attention. And that right. doesn't include, I think there was over a hundred thousand dollars in what's called earned media in the mm -hmm. PR world, which is free coverage in publications that people who hire voice talent use ad week campaign, right. us production hub, um, a All kinds asset. of things. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it would have been ridiculous to start something and not have that side plan in there. So, you know, when you talk about personal branding, and I've always loved that brand. So aligning my brand with their brand, I still, to this day, get questions about Jeep. Uh, people still talk about that campaign. We, like um, we are tonight. I yeah, remember. I mean, it never just, forget that. So it just it goes and it went against everything we had been taught as a voice talent. It went against everything we'd been taught. I will say I did ask my um, and this is going to sound like funny, but my step cousin in law who used to do PR for Ford, she and I have always been very close since I was a teenager. And she asked a bunch of her PR people in Detroit uh, why she thought they didn't use me. And all of them unanimously said that they thought that Jeep, I mean, uh, at the time it was um, uh, 
Chrysler. I think it was Chrysler. Chrysler. Yeah. Chrysler. Yeah. Now they're Stellantis, but um, that the legal department wouldn't touch me with a 10 foot pole. That legally they just, and this was, if you recall, this was right at the cusp of content creation, like right before content creation and content creators became right. a thing. But so, you were already doing it. it was I was already doing work. it. Right. And so that, you know, it, it, it crossed lines where they, they, I don't think they knew how to handle it um, hmm. because I was creating all this content. And I won four tally awards based on that <laughs> content. So, you know, it was, it was fun. And it's funny now because my daughter, who is a lot older now, she uh, – is an influencer, I guess, of sorts. And that's what she's majoring in in college. And she has inspired me and talked me into doing like officially content creation. So I have pimped out my dog and we do dog food, dog treats, dog collars and get paid for it. Not just, you know, free stuff. I mean, right. you got to pay me. Um, mm -hmm. And it was great. And one of those clients actually reached out the other day and asked about voiceover. So, you know, whether I do voice it, so, I mean, it's just. What do you know? Yeah, it was dink. fun. <laughs> what were some of the things that you created for Jeep? I mean, despite oh the fact gosh. that they weren't ultimately successful at that, but clearly yeah. it, it did benefit. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of benefits. Yeah. I, um, I was working with Zach Miller, bless his soul. Um, and he would help me produce so much of this stuff, but we did the Jeep hair, we care series, which I loved. And oh, yeah. Uh, my favorite was getting to interview a uh, fellow voice actor, Brian Howard, who created the African-American voice actor database. He also was bassist for one of my bassist for one of my favorite bands, Cracker, back in the 80s. So huh. to have him in my Jeep. Now, his dreadlocks didn't make Jeep hair. My hair, on the other hand, went all over the place. And I was so nervous to meet him. I didn't turn the microphones on. So... The, we just had the GoPro noise, but it's still, that is still one of my favorites um, that we did was Jeep Hair We Care. And I loved doing the Jeep Dog Tales where I reached out on social media and found people who had dogs and Jeeps and they would tell me these wonderful stories about their dogs. And so, and they'd send me pictures and then I would narrate over that. Mm. So you were essentially doing advertising for Jeep anyway. <laughs> I was creating content for them. Yeah. unpaid you know it cost me a lot of money um to do that but no one had ever done anything like that before and i felt uniquely qualified to do it because i came from that side of the business before i went into voiceover i've always done marketing and advertising and pr so it just seemed like a natural fit i'm glad i did it um but it took it took a long time to not not take it personally, not kind of have that gut punch feeling. Um, I had an agent call and asked if I was, or congratulated me on being the voice of the Jeep Compass ad, which was the first one in years to use a female voice. And it sounded a lot like me, but it wasn't. I oh, I cried I so that. hard. Oh my yeah. gosh. I'll, I'll admit it right now. I mean, I bawled. It was, it was hard. And it was hard to, to maintain the high ground and not you know, act all hurt about it and just kind of be like, yeah, no problem. Because I still love the brand. I drive a Jeep. Um, my husband still drives a Jeep. My daughter still drives a Jeep. So, I mean, you know what? Jeep I, people. I gotta Kaching. think there was people in Kaching. the company who were like, we got to get this. We got to have her. We got, there was probably internally, <laughs> I bet there was a battle between people who wanted you and I then wish. those that were like, we can't hire her. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there was like, are you kidding me? The brand that you established, the, all that you did with them, and the it was such an obvious fit. And but there was it was probably like this kind of a battle going on up and down between top and bottom. You know what I mean? Because they didn't think that. they didn't understand content creation because content creation wasn't a thing. They where it but is. I mean, now. They, they at the top didn't understand, mm -mm. but people at the bottom, I from the bottom did. up, I'm sure they did. I made a really. I'm good I'm sure friend. they looked at that as a lost uh, opportunity. One of the guys, yeah. and he wasn't at the bottom; he was mid level. Uh, but one of the guys, the first email I sent out before I even went public, sent me a, an email back that said, holy crap, who are you and how did you do this? 
and <laughs> he and I are still really good friends. Uh, he comes to my family reunion in Michigan, or before the pandemic, he would come every year. I mean, he's um, not even family. He's not even family, but I mean, he just, and he's come to see us and go to Georgia games and stuff. Um, great guy. But all of that came about because of Jeep and he just, he was blown away that I was able to coordinate it like that. Yeah. So it made sense. It was hard, but in the long run, it was worth it. Oh yeah. I mean, for yeah. almost a 40% increase in my bottom line. Yeah. That's worth it. Yeah. That was, I would say that was worth it. Yeah. Once I got again, over we're the heartbreak with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I would hate to see you sad. Anyway, we're talking with Kelly Buttrick. We're talking about marketing for your voiceover business. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or whether you're watching on YouTube Live or whether you're hearing signals from space or whatever. Throw the stuff into the chat room, and we will get to that question in just a little bit. Maybe you found a recording that's attached to a satellite, and you're from the future on another planet. (laughs) Right. Welcome. (laughs) Thanks for listening to our record. That's right. Of course, it'll it'll take ten thousand years for it to come back, and then, and and then the response will be, "What was that? Why did you?" Well, it's going to be those guys are so cool and so fun. There I wish go. we had guys like that in our time period. Come what on, are those have a noises positive attitude. Making, what are those noises they're making at each other? Yes. <laughs> and send more Chuck Berry. Anyway, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. You know, there's so many new people to the since you and I started in this yeah. low before dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, there's so many more new people in here, and and perhaps they don't understand what they need to do to market themselves. Yet, as we know, it's the key to, to getting work. Yep. What would you suggest to someone? who is a total neophyte or a noob or a newbie or whatever it is that we call these people that are trying and we respect them all. Yeah, absolutely. Despite the fact that some of them are recovering podiatrists and chiropractors and IT people and stuff, nothing against that. They want to get into this business. Fabulous. But they have to understand that one of the most important pieces is, is you got to go out and find the work yourself. What would you suggest to somebody to, to really, when they're like, they got nothing and they want to get people to hire them. What would you suggest? Uh, first of all, I would suggest to that you be original um, because I will say since the pandemic, I have experienced more, I don't want to call it theft because that's kind of dramatic, but imitation. Which is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. But when I am going through my LinkedIn feed and I saw another voice talent with my exact bio, word for word, Ooh. Mm. Um, you know, that's yucky Eesh. and icky and not cool. And when I would post, um, especially, uh, again, later on in the pandemic, when I would post and tag my clients, which is something I used to really like to do to, you know, shout them out, all of a sudden a bunch of voice talent would all be in there, uh, you know, trying to connect with them or sending them emails. And so be original. Um, Don't, don't take from other people. You are, you're, you are a unique, wonderful person. Uh, Speaking of that, as being a unique, wonderful person, it is really important that everyone you know, knows what you do. And that is the first thing I did as a voiceover talent is even people you don't think have any clue. I'm telling you, I have gotten jobs from my dad's fishing buddy that he was kind of put with on a tournament. You know, um, I have gotten jobs from old boyfriends from high school who saw that I did it on, um, Facebook. I have got, I mean, it's just uncles, brothers, cousins, you know, friends, uh, friends of friends, neighbors, let everybody know what you do, but do it in a non-cheesy, non-braggy way. What we do is so unique and interesting. Really, all you have to do is say, I'm a voiceover talent, and just shut up. Yeah. Because they, they're going to ask, what is that? You know? <laughs> well... Then you can answer. <laughs> then it doesn't seem like you're dominating the conversation by, I'm a voice talent. I do this, that, and the other. If you just say, I'm a voice talent, and shut up, then they're interested. And they right. will, and, and then tell them what you do, but then keep asking them questions about themselves and be genuinely interested. Don't be fake about it. Be genuinely interested. Find some way. This is why I don't like elevator pitches. I, I believe in elevator outlines. So you kind of have these, 
three or four, maybe five points in your head at all times. And as you're asking this person these questions, you can find ways from those three to five points to tie one of those in with something they do. Um, for example, and I've told this story before, there was a, a guy who said that he listened to uh, Pandora. He was in Athens and he listened to Pandora on the way into Atlanta. So that was perfect. I could say, oh, well, then you've heard my daughter and you've heard me because I've done this, that, and the other. That's, that's voiceover. And so it tied in. But if people are just interested in what we do, so just say it and shut up and answer questions and really just kind of try to find a way to make it relatable for them. Right. And that's usually the first question they ask after you say, well, I'm in voice over there. Well, what have I heard you on? Right. What, or do what, do a you, voice. what do you tell them? <laughs> what do I tell them? Oh, well, when they say do a voice, I used to uh, network in person with, um, an, uh, I shouldn't say aspiring. He was a new voice talent, but he was really good at characters. And so I would just <laughs> let him do that. And I would tell them, this is my voice. I actually specialize in sounding real. And while that doesn't seem complicated, it is not easy to make someone else's words sound like your own or make right. quantitative immunoglobulins sound like something we just chat about. Or, oh my gosh, 0% financing. Really? <laughs> I mean, let's try to make that sound conversational. <laughs> But we've all done it, or at least we've tried. Yep. Well, once again, we're talking with Kelly Buttrick. Throw your questions in the chat room, and we will get to them in just a couple of minutes. But right now, we are going to take a break, and we'll be right back with her and lots more stuff here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Inflated prices? Not at voiceoveressentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure, flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, they'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO 2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. What's it like for you when you check your email and there is a voiceover audition waiting for you to dive in and you go, great, this is awesome, and then that fear starts to creep in. Am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I going to give them what they want? Listen, I've been there. And so has my friend Michael Kostroff, who is now one of my voiceover clients. Very excited about that. He's applied his Audition Psych 101 process and method to voiceover. And it's awesome. He's got three free uh, lessons right now that are available at auditionpsych101.com slash join. That's auditionpsych101.com slash join. Go watch these right now. By the time you watch this, maybe they're all out. Who knows? But it's worth every moment to help you get your mind right 
on the psychology of auditioning. AuditionPsych101.com slash join. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back Hi. with... Hey, how you doing? Good. Didn't I mean just, to surprise figuring, you there. Well, I'm coming out, and, and Sue told me about that, but I... Um, I was I was responding to some of the comments since ah. I couldn't I couldn't do it on there. So just so that you guys know that during the commercials I'm going through and I'm I'm seeing some good questions. Good. Well, why don't we ask you some of those questions? Yeah, okay. Oh, good. Good. Let's go to those, George. Yeah, the first one you in have the queue call. is from uh, Drew Barbo, who's asking through YouTube. When doing cold emails, do you send mm -hmm. a demo with it? And follow up, would you send the full length demo? or just a short version of it? Good question, Drew. Um, and that goes to something we were talking about uh, earlier, just the difference between then and now. Um, and I would say it really depends on who you're sending it to. <clears throat> if you are sending it to someone at an ad agency, I would send a link to your demo on your website. First of all, it gets them to your website. There's all kinds of other great stuff there. Um, but if you're sending it, say, to a production company trying to get on their roster, you know that their digital media can handle it. Uh, I would send, and all my demos are varying lengths, so I'm, I'm not quite sure when you talk about different lengths, I wouldn't send a demo over 90 seconds at most. Um, as an MP3, many times I'll use the phrase, <clears throat> and sorry, you guys, my voice is going. I'll use the phrase something to the effect of um, thank you for listening to my demo or agreeing to listen to my demo or allowing me to send my demo. If you'd like to hear more demos, samples of my work, testimonials, etc., please click here. And on a Mac, again, something else that my mentor told me about, if you hit control K, you highlight the word and you hit control K, it actually puts that link over the word here. Um, and so they can just click it and then it's there. And that way you're giving them two options. But if they are not a production company, I tend not to actually send my demo because I don't know if they're, they're going to hear it on a phone or something like that. I, I would just, I usually just do it for um, in-house production companies at ad agencies, production companies, obviously um, talent agencies, those folks are used to getting demos and can handle it. Yeah. And, and one of one of our listeners, let me get the name here, just to show you that I can do this. Inyan Igmuthanka Bay. <laughs> oh, I love uh, that name. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, Inyan. Yeah. In, Inyan Igmuthanka Bay. In, Inyan. <laughs> Inyan. 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 Yes. And I'm yes. sorry. Inyan. Okay. Igmuthanka Bay. It is so cool. Your your name's just fun to say. Yeah, and it's a Moroccan flag, so I'm taking it. He's from yeah. Morocco. Yeah. Anyway, he, he says you know, a lot of people are very hesitant to open files, fearing it may yeah. be a virus, as you were saying. But you know, Inya's right on point, and so it's just that's why you kind of gotta see. You know, some people are afraid of following links. That's true. You know, um, I mean, I mean, if it says something like, "Hey, I just saw you're you're in this picture." And there's a link, maybe, you know, but if yeah. it's a Are business Are you in this movie? Thing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get that Did one. Did you see who died? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and now it's all in texts. We've they got rid of spam calls. Now we're getting spam texts. It's awful. Awful. I know. I know. My, my old bank in Buffalo, is. they're like sending me stuff like, You're, we're checking on your account. Well, we're not going to find anything there. So <laughs> and, anyway, uh, you get the question from Terry Briscoe. George. Yeah, Terry asks, Kelly, thanks for being here. And I know that thanks, you Terry. are known for bold self-promotion, but what is your most successful way to attract new clients? New well, clients. I mean friends. Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> ah, I love that, Terry. You are so, oh, I like it. Uh, big hug for Terry. Um, I think the best way to attract new clients, let me think about that. Uh, the way I'm doing it, <clears throat> again, is is reaching out with, cold emails, uh, having Diane reach out. Did, did we talk? We talked about this. On yes, we the did. official one. Okay. Yeah. Having Diane do the cold call and then 
once you've made that initial contact, then I go and friend them on social media, absolutely connect with them on LinkedIn. And then I start to grow that relationship. So Terry, what I'm talking about in, in, in doing it in a genuine way, grow that relationship, grow that friendship. Things like when they post an article, I will repost it and say a comment like, have you guys read the such and such so-and-so? I had no idea. Or sending them a, a DM maybe with an article that made you think about them. Hey, George, I read this article about these new headphones. Have you heard about these? How cool is that? Usually, you know, try to leave a question at the end of it if I DM somebody so that you can start a conversation. Have you tried these yet? Um, so that you, you're starting a conversation by asking that question. You're showing a genuine interest in them. And it takes forever, Terry. It, it, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. But it is these relationships that you form now that are going to carry you through the slow times. Um, you know, especially with the, the big influx of so many people coming into our industry. It is really nice to see that my existing clients keep coming back because they know me, they know I care about them, they know I care about their projects, they don't, they don't have to guess if somebody's home studio is really a home studio. They know. And all of that is through relationship building. Um, I hope that answers your question, Terry. And I, I know it's not easy, um, but just finding ways to one-on-one, -on -one, not sending out a blast like uh, we talked about earlier, not sending out a ton of the same postcard or a, you know general email, just one-on-one, -on -one, keep talking with them. And there are ways, there are, there are inexpensive ways to stay top of mind with these people. Um, I have a newsletter that I actually asked Liz Denesnera if she was okay with me sending out because it's very much like hers. I thought her idea was brilliant. And she does a happy Tuesday from Liz and she posts a picture usually of the same lake, but because it's outdoors and in nature, it's different every time. And it's not salesy. It's not talking about voiceover. So I called her several years ago and started something called Think Outside Thursdays and have grown it recently into Think Outside Encounters. And they are all about the outdoors, all about different uh, ways you can get out there, encourages people to get outside. The benefits of being outdoors, it talks, you know, sometimes I'll pull a poem or a quote. I'll talk about the picture I've taken because I love taking pictures outside. I'm not great. I always say, you know, took this with my iPhone while I was running past. But it's just a, it's a fun way to stay top of mind, which again, the blasts are okay for staying top of mind, but the relationship building really needs to be targeted, consistent, and show that you genuinely care about this person. Makes a lot of sense. You use LinkedIn a lot, don't you? Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about how you use LinkedIn, because I, I know it's... It, we, we have a mutual friend that talk, talks about this a whole lot. Yeah. It's, there are a lot of people are like, you know, they make a connection on LinkedIn and then they're like, hi, I'm a voice actor. Do you want to hire me? Yeah, no, 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 no. How do you how don't do, you do, do that. that? What's do the proper that, way of doing that? Don't do that. Um, first of all, I highly recommend our mutual friend, Tracy Lindley, um, and her LinkedIn edge uh, because I took that when she first, she let me kind of try it out, prototype it or whatever. Uh, and I learned so many things. And I took what I learned from Tracy and my own marketing PR brain and have kind of meshed those things together. So the way I do it, um, it really kind of depends on what time of day it is. If it is in the evening and I've had a glass of wine, sometimes <laughs> I just reach out and I don't make it personal at all. I just connect. If I, if I see somebody who has a ton of common, common names, I'll hit connect, which goes against everything I just said about making it personal. <laughs> but it's amazing how many people, if you share enough, will just go ahead and connect with you. The, the people I connect with after the cold email 
it's usually something to the effect of like if it's a Georgia alumni, I'll say, because I graduated from the University of Georgia, I'll start it off, go dogs. Um, you know, go dogs. I, I am assuming you had, you know, Dr. Hollander's class too. <laughs> um, always nice to connect with a fellow Grady grad. Um, finding something you have in common. Um, a lot of times with videographers or photographers, they have a picture of something that's really cool. And so I'll say, wow, that picture was amazing. Can you please tell me how you, how you got something like that? That's just awesome. And I'm not a photographer. I just use my iPhone. But even the time of day, everything about this picture just speaks to me. How did you do that? Again, asking a question so that it leads back to, leads back to a, a discussion and a conversation. All righty. Uh... John O'Rourke asks, can you give us a tour of your booth? I mean, it's oh going to be simply at turning around and <laughs> showing yeah. what's in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, John, so my booth is a Studio Bricks booth. Um, and if I take this camera down, unfortunately, it will, um, it, it's a pain to get it back up. And you guys will have to watch me like lick the sucker thing and stick it on. It's not pretty. You might want to fix that. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a, a Studio Bricks Triple Wall Pro. And I worked with Guillermo Jungbauer back in the early days before, you know, became such a thing to custom design it. And I based my design on a whisper room that Sean Caldwell once had. So right here where I've got this camera is a window and my monitor is behind the window. So it keeps the heat out. Um, there is a 300 pound glass door that right now is open that I had to use my car jack to get in. <laughs> yeah. It usually um, takes an honor guard to pull that thing. Around. Yeah. I hired, um, a local, not local from Charlotte. So not far away, uh, engineer, and he has come to help me put it together. Uh, we've decided now that we're both too old to drag each piece down from the garage to the basement level. We're going to hire somebody young and strong. Um, out here is a windowless area. It's a, it's a finished room in my basement. And then way over there in the corner is a little window where I have a desk, though I don't spend much time there. Um, Jonna, to be honest with you, because I have spent years in this four by five padded room all day, I 90% of the time that I'm not in here, I am on my laptop out on my porch. I just, I have to, I have to get out. Um, but yeah, this, uh, does that, oh, and I have a stand up, um, and it was cheaper than a stand up desk. You guys, I got this thing on Amazon here, man, I can probably, it's messy, but see this, right? Yep. So that is a, it's a rolling cart. It's a rolling laptop cart and there's shelves and stuff underneath it. Um, and so that's a great thing to have because it just takes up a tiny little bit in my in my booth and it allows me to stand mm. so that was a great purchase yeah i'm a big fan of that kind of a thing for your laptop or anything in your booth yeah it really it rather than a permanently mounted shelf that's not exactly the size or the height that you really wanted it to be yep these adjustable stands make way more sense oh they're yeah. so good and they just and they're on wheels so like when i vacuum the booth out uh because sometimes my dogs are in here with me um, yeah. I just vacuum it out and all of my gear, Jonna, is outside and the cables are running in through the bottom and the front, but it's all outside. So there's just, there's no noise. Everything is yeah. right here and there's not a lot of heat. Ah, even better. That's yeah. really important. <laughs> uh, especially now. Um, yeah. Jim McNicholas asks, trying to expand my client list, where would you suggest I start? I think this is kind of a rehash of maybe... A couple early. things we've covered. Yeah, but he's but saying I don't know if you what, have a new angle. Yeah, for um, getting new for clients. Expanding. Okay, so where expanding you where you are. Um, hmm. So I'm trying to think of some of the things that I did that were new. Uh, I mean, if you have an out. established connection with a certain like industry, is it easier to move horizontally through the same industry and establish oh, yeah. new connections in the same industry? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, as far as LinkedIn goes, it's just, you know, looking at your, your first connections. Um, and if you're following their feed, then you will see people comment 
on their stuff. And you can always reach out to that person and say something to the effect of, your comment was so on point. Or I'd be interested in, in knowing a little bit more about why you felt this logo of the three he presented was best. Um, you know, just something to ask a question on LinkedIn. And again, making sure everybody you know knows what you do uh, in a non-cheesy way. And the basic principles of marketing have never changed. It's, it's how we present that that has changed. Everything about marketing should be about increasing your know, like, and trust factor. Everything you post needs to be, and not all about you, but it needs to make you knowable, approachable, likable. People work with people they like. Um, so know, like, and trust. And trust is things like this like a, appearing on VOBS. This gives me credibility as, as, a, as a voice actor who gets to come on to this really cool podcast about, you know, the whole industry. So that's a kind, you know, just everything needs to be focused on know, like, and trust, whatever it is you do. Yeah. I we hope that answers. For, oh, I did. Certainly did. We okay. got time for one more question here, and this is a really good one from Stephen Blair. Do you source through a Google search first? Who do you target and how do you establish a relationship with them? Oh, like where do I get my, oh, prospecting. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. No, um, I have not done a Google search at all. When I first started, again, the differences. There was no is, Google. <laughs> there was, yeah. No, there was. I'm not that old. There was a Google. Um, but I am old enough to have used the Digiphone ISDN database. And I started in Alabama and worked my way down through the states because you could tell on the database which ones were individuals and which ones were studios. And because having ISDN at that point was so expensive and rare for a voice talent to have, it really narrowed uh, the competition. And that I built so many relationships that way. But you can go to, um, so say the, uh, I used to go network again before the pandemic at, uh, there was a group of production people and they would get together once a month and a group of us, uh, voice talent, we're all very close in the Atlanta area. We would go and network and meet with people in person um, you can also go to websites uh, that are focused on marketing, advertising, production. You can join groups on social media that are focused on that. And you can absolutely do that. If you do a Google search, it's kind of like when people Google search voice talent. It's, it's really kind of, you know, you're, take, you're taking a risk. Right. Um, because everybody puts their best foot forward. And you could waste so much time doing a Google search and then trying to vet this client whether they're worth your time and effort just start with a known quantity look at where your ideal client hangs out and go hang out there even if it's just online be there search that area that's that's what you want absolutely gold yes you know this is this is the kind of stuff that i wanted our audience to hear from you because marketing is is it's a mystery to most people and yeah. you've got a you've got a very set way of doing it and a very logical way uh, <laughs> that uh, you know. Oh, it's so nice like, to hear you say that because sometimes I feel like, oh my god, what am I doing now? Well, <laughs> well, that, well, a lot of marketing is like taking stuff, throwing it against the wall, and then right. seeing what sticks. So you got to try everything. I've done a everything. lot of that. I've done a lot of that over the years. <laughs> yes. Well, it is great having you on here. It's great to see you again. Hopefully, we will see each other soon at some conference here or there or whatever. Yes, uh, I really hope so. I want where, to hug y'all again. Oh, uh, you know I do. Uh, so where can people get a hold of you virtually? Virtually. Um, and it's funny, somebody actually already did from the, the promo. Uh, uh, a guy reached out and asked me about prospecting uh, using um, paid, uh, I guess paid, it was an AI connection, something or another. And I felt yeah. bad because I had no idea. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I'm old school. Um, <laughs> but... You can reach me through my website, which is brand spanking new, finally. Ooh. If it tells you anything, the folder with all the stuff in it was called Website Refresh 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I taken a long time. 
But uh, it is kbvoiceovers.com. And if you're interested in the Think Outside newsletter, again, I'm, I'm not pitching myself on it. I just, I really think everybody should take some time and get outdoors. Uh, not coaster bike racing, coaster brake racing, just saying. Well, okay, um, that's not you know, for everybody. A um, little scary, but <laughs> if you want to get on the Think Outside newsletter, it's there. Um, and if, if I can help you, you know, just shoot me an email, kb at kbvoiceovers.com. Please do not take offense if it takes me a long time to get back with you. I'm so you're sorry. A, you're a busy um, lady. Well, it's just, you know, I mean, there's just, a, there's a lot going on in my life right now. So I, I will do the best I can. I promise I will get back to you. It just may take me a while. All righty. Kelly, thanks again for being with us. Thank we'll you. Have and you thanks on. all of you who came and, yeah. and asked Great questions. Thank today. you, guys. Thank you. All right. No problem. All right. Kelly Buttrick. Big hug. Big hug. All righty. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break, and George and I will wrap things up for this week, and then we will do Tech Talk. So if you got your tech questions ready, throw them in the chat room now, too. We'll be right back to say goodbye right here on Voice Over Body Shop. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, it's what? my turn? It's your turn. Okay, you got it. It's my turn to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. Um, boy, what can I say that has not already been said? I've been improvising commercials for this company for five-plus years, and um, I'm telling you, they're still dominating, especially now having uh, had the the pandemic come and I wanted to say go. Well, it hasn't. <laughs> That's the sad story. It hasn't gone. Um, most are still more comfortable working remotely. It's pretty clear. Um, and you need the right tools to do it. And this is still the thing people uh, in production really love using because it saves production time. At the end of the day, your job as a voice actor is to provide your talent, but also fit into the machinery that they have constructed. You have to be this cog that meshes and turns smoothly and doesn't make noise, right? Um, except when they pay you to, and that's your voice acting. So Source Connect allows that to happen, allows your voice to go right into the production, fit in, be previewed, be reviewed, listened to by the client, and even signed off on a final edit before the end of the session. And that's the kind of thing, the efficiency that Source Connect allows. This is why uh, the big paying jobs, the best work in voiceover happens there. And if you're gunning for that, you've got an agent, or you're considering going that level, it's time to get signed up. Go over to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial. Check out the new website they've been putting together. It's got better content. More content to learn from. It's easier to find things than ever at source-elements.com. Thanks. Let's get back to the wrap of the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Turn mic hey. on. Got it. Been a long time since I've had a had to press that button. Had to actually press. You're usually the only one in here, so that, you don't have to that, mute it. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Boy, great having Kelly on. I miss her a whole lot. It's been way too long, and she's uh, such an exuberant, great example of how you're supposed to do this business. So we want to thank her again for for joining us. Uh, let's see here. Next week on this show, or if you'd like, hang out live right now and just stay with us if you're watching the show live. 
We're going to do Tech Talk. Tech Talk number 83 is coming up next week. Uh, who are our donors of the week? People like Jonathan Grant. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Tom Pinto. Shelley Avellino. George Whittem, your dad. My dad, Brian Page. Uh, Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Ant Land Productions. Shanna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Dana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. Yeah, you can donate to the show. Maintain the amazing technical excellence that you witness every week here on this show. So just go to our website, and there's a little button there underneath us. It says, donate now, or is it above us? I can never remember. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's the next Georgia Tech webinar coming up? Universal oh, Apollo? Yes, I really am. It's the, it's the audio <laughs> interface that we love to hate on, but a lot of you use it, and a lot of people are still interested in adopting this tech. So I'm teaching a webinar August 2nd at 3 p.m., and you can sign up over at georgethe.tech slash webinars and uh, be there live so you can answer so i can answer your questions that's the main reason to be there live uh, for that interactivity and if you can't be there live you can actually rent it later after the fact yeah and knowing universal apollo there will be lots of questions <laughs> why does it do this why and why, why doesn't is it, it so hard to do why doesn't it do that <laughs> yeah. well, anyway uh we need to thank our sponsors harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements VoHeroes.com, voice actor websites.com jmc demos and worldvoices.org the industry right. association of freelance voice talent join today Welcome. Uh, our thanks again to Jeff Holman for doing yeoman duty in the chat room and on Facebook, on YouTube, and all the other places he hangs out. Sue Merlino, thank you so much for a great job as our technical director. And, of course, Lee Penny, just for being Lee Penny. Uh, well, we're going to rack it up for Tech Talk. Do not go away. If you've got a tech question, throw it in the chat room, and we'll be right back. But that's going to do it for this week. Have a great week, everybody. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whitten. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech, no, Tech Talk's next. Next. It's coming up next, yeah.